Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar this evening. Our title today is Chronic Kidney Disease and Cardiovascular Disease. And just to tell you a little bit about how everything's going to work today, um, our format includes a short presentation followed by um, an interactive discussion. Uh, at the end, you'll have a chance to ask some questions. Uh, how you'll ask the questions is you'll type them in uh, the question section of the webinar toolbar, which hopefully you can see. Um, so, and uh, we look forward to questions and to an interactive webinar. Um, they will be, again, at the end of the presentation. Okay, so some disclaimers. Um, we know that the information you're about to hear may motivate you to make some lifestyle changes, um, but please consult your physician before making any changes to your current routine. Uh, the Cecilia Health Registered Dietitian is about to speak, will provide strategies to help manage your CKD and the online uh, kind of Q&A session is intended to give general advice. Um, this information is not a substitute for personal medical advice um, and, in, and it involves the professional opinion of the Cecilia Health Registered Dietitian. And here she is. This is Nancy Cohen. She is our um, registered dietitian nutritionist. She will be uh, our presenter for today. And a little bit about Nancy. Uh, she is a licensed registered dietitian. She presently lives in Pennsylvania. She has a degree in nutrition and dietetics from the University of Florida and has been working in the nutrition field for over 40 years. Uh, she educates clients in all areas of medical nutrition and wellness and is happy to be a member of the Cecilia Health team. Nancy is the mother of an adult 29-year-old son and has a passion for her beautiful Weimariner dog, uh, Dinah, I believe, and she, lives, uh, she loves to work with all of her clients online in the Cecilia Health CKD program. And she brings a positive attitude to all, um, to all on ways to incorporate good nutrition into life and to make the most out of every day. Uh, so Nancy, go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, I'm Nancy Cohen. I'm gonna do the pre uh, presentation tonight. So just sit back and listen, and then when it's time, you can put questions in the chat box, and we'll address them at the end of the presentation. So tonight's webinar, what we will be covering is what is heart disease, CKD and heart disease, symptoms of heart disease, cause of heart disease, tests for heart disease and treatments and prevention of heart disease, which includes medications, surgeries, and healthy eating for heart disease and CKD. So what is heart disease? Heart disease describes, hold on, I just have to move this one thing out of my way. There we go, okay. Heart disease describes a range of conditions that affects the heart and heart disease includes blood vessel disease such as coronary artery disease, irregular heartbeats or arrhythmias, heart problems you're born with, congenital heart defects, diseases of the heart muscle, and heart valve disease. And there are many forms of heart disease that can be prevented or treated with healthy lifestyle choices. Let me just... When the kidneys don't work, well, more stress is put on the heart. So someone that has CKD, their heart needs to pump harder to get blood to the kidneys, and this can lead to heart disease, the leading cause of death in the United States. Change in blood pressure is also a CKD complication that can lead to heart disease. And these are some symptoms of heart disease. In the blue are the men, discomfort or tingling in arms, back, neck, shoulder, or jaw, chest pain, shortness of breath, and the, the red are the females, sudden dizziness, heartburn-like feelings, 
unusual tiredness, nausea, or vomiting. And of course, anything that we're mentioning, you're going to ask your doctor about. I am not a diagnostician, and I'm hoping that everything here sits very comfortably with you. There are many different causes of heart disease. Um, coronary artery disease is a buildup of fatty plaques in the arteries or atherosclerosis and is the most common cause of coronary artery disease. The risk factors include a poor diet, lack of exercise, obesity, and smoking. And healthy lifestyle choices can help lower the risks of atherosclerosis. Irregular heartbeats can be um, influenced by cardiomyopathy, coronary artery disease, diabetes, drug misuse, emotional stress, excessive use of alcohol or caffeine, heart problems present at birth, high blood pressure, smoking, heart valve disease, and use of certain medications, um, including those bought without a prescription. So lots of things affecting that. And then thickened or enlarged heart muscles, the three areas are dilated cardiomyopathy, and this is the cause, this cause of the most common type of cardiomyopathy often is unknown, and it may be to pass down through families. Dilated cardiomyopathy typically starts in the heart's main pumping chamber, and many things can cause damage to the left ventricle, including heart attacks, infections, toxins, some drugs, including cancer medicines. Another type is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and this type is usually passed down through the family. And then there is restricted cardiomyopathy, and this is the least common type, and it can occur for no reason, no, no known reason. Sometimes it is caused by a buildup of protein called amyloid in the heart, or connective tissue disorders. Also, heart infections from bacteria, viruses, and parasites, and heart valve disease from rheumatic fever infections such as infectious endocarditis or connective tissue disorders. So there are several different types of tests for heart disease. The first one is the electrocardiogram, and that's known as the ECG or EKG, and it's a quick and painless test that records the electrical signals in the heart. It can tell if the heart is beating too fast or too slow. The Holter monitoring, a Holter monitor is a portable ECG device that can be worn for a day or more to record the heart's activity during daily activities. This test can detect irregular heartbeats that aren't found during a regular ECG exam. The echocardiogram, this non-invasive exam, uses sound waves to create detailed images of the heart in motion. It shows how blood moves through the heart and heart valves. An echocardiogram can help determine if a valve is narrowed or leaking. And then there's the exercise tests or stress tests. These tests often involve walking on a treadmill or riding on a stationary bike while the heart is monitored. Exercise tests help reveal how the heart responds to physical activity and whether heart disease symptoms occur during exercise. If you can't exercise, you might be given medications. The cardiac catheterization is a test that can show blockages in the heart arteries. A long, thin, flexible tube is inserted into a blood vessel, usually in the groin or wrist, and guided to the heart. Dye flows through the catheters to arteries in the heart, and the dye helps the arteries show up more clearly on an X-ray exam during the test. There is a heart cardiac CT scan, and in the cardiac CT scan, you can lie on a table inside a donut-shaped machine. An X-ray tube inside the machine rotates around your body and collects images of your heart and chest. And the heart cardiac magnetic resonance imaging, the MRI scan, this uses a magnetic field and computer-generated radio waves to create detailed images of the heart. There are several different types of medications and prevention for treatment and prevention of heart disease. 
There are the anticoagulants, which help prevent harmful clots, the antiplatelet agents, which prevent clots by preventing blood platelets from sticking together. There is the angiotensin converting enzymes or the ACE inhibitors. These allow blood to flow more easily. Angiotensin II receptor blockers or ARBs, they keep the blood pressure from rising. Angiotensin receptor nephrilicin inhibitors or ARNIs improve artery opening and blood flow. Beta blockers lower blood pressure and make the heartbeat more slowly with less force. And then there are combined alpha and beta blockers which treat high blood pressure and heart failure and calcium channel blockers which can decrease the heart's pumping strength and relax the blood vessels. There are cholesterol lowering medications. Some affect the liver, some in the intestines, and others interrupt the formation of cholesterol from circulating in the blood. There are digitalis preparations, which increase the force of the heart's contractions. Diuretics, which help get rid of excess fluid, which reduces the workload on the heart. And vasodilators, which relax blood vessels and decrease blood pressure. There are many different types of surgeries, of course, all determined by your cardiologist. The first one is called an angioplasty. It's a deflated balloon that threads through the coronary arteries to widen blocked areas where blood flow has been reduced or cut off. There's artificial heart valve surgery, there's an atherectomy, and there's bypass surgery. There is cardiomyoplasty, there is a heart transplant, and then there's minimally invasive heart surgery. There is also radiofrequency ablations, a stent placement, and then there's transmyocardial revascularization, or TMR. Okay, and I didn't go into great detail with the different types of surgeries. I am a nutritionist, so I'm gonna spend more time talking with you about the wonderful opportunities for lifestyle changes. So let's take a look at what we can do to support our heart health. So there are several different uh, recommendations for treatment and prevention of heart disease. I'm just gonna slide that there, there you go. So the very first one, most important, don't smoke. Smoking is a major risk factor for heart disease, especially, especially atherosclerosis. Quitting is the best way to reduce the risk of heart disease and its complications. If you need help quitting, talk to your provider. The second one is eating healthy foods, my all-time favorite topic. Eating plenty of fruits and vegetables and whole grains, limiting sugar, salt, and saturated fats. Controlling blood pressure. Uncontrolled high blood pressure increases the risk of serious health problems. Get your blood pressure checked at least every two years if you're 18 and older. And if you have risk factors for heart disease or are over age 40, you may need more frequent checks. Ask your health care provider what blood pressure reading is best for you. Get a cholesterol test. Ask your provider for a baseline cholesterol test when you're in your 20s, and then at least every four to six years. You may need to start testing earlier if high cholesterol is in your family. And you may need more frequent checks every four to six years. Uh, you may need more frequent checks if your test results aren't in a desirable range or if you have risk factors for heart disease. And manage diabetes. If you have diabetes, tight blood sugar control can help reduce the risk of heart disease. So continuing on with treatment and prevention of heart disease, nutrition for a healthy heart is such of great value. The recommendations include controlling your portion sizes. Overloading your plate can lead to consuming more calories than you should. 
eating more fruits and vegetables. And choose non-starchy vegetables over starchy. Select whole grains. Looking for foods that say 100% whole grains or have whole wheat as the first ingredient is a good thing to look for. And limit unhealthy fats. So using oils with the good fats, such as olive oil, canola, coconut, or sunflower oil. And choose low fat protein sources. Whole eggs, quinoa, egg whites, and fish are great options. Nutrition for a healthy heart, we continue, and what's very important to all of us is to watch our salt intake. So limit or reduce salt. We guide you to limit to one teaspoon of salt per day or 2,300 milligrams of sodium. We suggest you avoid salt substitutes that say new salt or no salt, because these are made with potassium and could raise your potassium to a dangerously high level. Or as I like to say to my clients, make sure you ask your doctors if it's okay if you use potassium salts, but don't do that without asking. Choosing canned and jarred foods that say no salt added on the package. Choose no salt added snacks, such as unsalted or no salt pretzels, etc. Prepare and cook your meals from scratch using one of our kidney friendly recipes so you can control the amount of salt in your food. And you can ask your dietitian if they can give you those kidney friendly recipes. They're right in the um, information and we're happy to share them with you. Use fresh or dried herbs and spices to add extra flavor to your dishes instead of salt. And drink water instead of sports drinks or sodas. And when you are eating out, ask your server for your food to be prepared without any added salt. And of course, plan ahead. And don't forget, of course, you can have an occasional treat. So what we like to see our clients doing, and we recommend, is do plan ahead your menus. We are not trying to keep you from having your favorite foods. On the other hand, we don't want you to have so many of something that it's going to push your sodium up or push your fat intake up. So plan ahead and create daily menus following the previously mentioned guidelines. And do allow occasional treats because an occasional treat will not derail your plan. So that is the essence of our presentation so far today. In the chat box right here, you can write your questions and you can tell me what they are and I will gladly answer them for everybody. Does anybody have a question? I'm so happy you all came today. Well, I do have a question here. Which is the most important change to make? So when I think about that question, and the recommendations were to not smoke, eat healthy foods, control your blood pressure, get your cholesterol tested, and manage your diabetes, I would probably say starting out with not smoking is very important because they said that is one of the number one causes of heart attacks. But the second one I would say is the ones that you can control. So you can always go to your physicians and check in. You can monitor all your different labs, but eating healthy is something that you can do to take care of yourself. And it also tastes really good. So eating more fruits and vegetables, eating lean sources of protein, getting whole grains, eating less processed food. So I would say working on making healthy food choices is one of the most important things that I would like to see you do. Does anybody else have a question? You can write that right in the chat box and I'm gonna open the chat box wider.
Okay. So another question that I have here is how do we determine portion sizes? And what I will say to you is everybody requires different calories and serving sizes. You can certainly ask your nutritionist who is your coach with Cecilia Health to assist you with some of this. But recommendations from 1,200 to 2,500 calories are within range from petite people up to tall people. And that having, you can always use that um, plate method as a, um, as a tool to evaluate your food choices where you're having two thirds vegetable, one third protein, one third starch. And you can ask again, your nutritionist to send you that handout on the plate method. I don't know, has anybody used that before? Okay, well, thank you for that question about portions. So another question that I have here is about limiting your salt intake. So the question is, is there too little salt that you can have? And the answer to that is that there is sodium in everything. There's sodium in chicken, there's sodium in a slice of bread. We're not asking you to restrict sodium under 2000 milligrams unless your physician asks you to. So always refer back to your physician and ask them, do I have a sodium restriction? Um, is there something I need to watch out for in my diet? Because all of your guidance around nutrition is based on your physician's recommendations. And we offer you the guidance from the American Heart Association and the uh, National Kidney Foundation. Okay, I'll give you another minute. If you can find the chat box, does any have a, else have a question they'd like to ask? Well, okay. Well, I'm so glad you all joined me tonight. Hold on one second. Um, here we go. So if you are interested in any of our upcoming live events, then let your clinician know. And I will tell you just the way you signed up tonight to register for this event, you can go back to the same link and look and see what other events that we've had for the future. There are some really neat ones coming up. And we just had three really great lectures on kidney disease this summer. So what you can do is register for them and then you can play it back. And if there were any questions about something that I provided for you tonight, you can always revisit this webinar and um, review the slides. So if you wanna attend more events, ask your clinician. We're so happy to reply to any of your emails and they will always share available information on our events. If you haven't signed up for text messages, ask your clinician or your health coach from Cecilia Health to give you um, text messages so we can let you know when they're coming up. And then we even have a Facebook page. So you can join us there on uh, facebook.com Cecilia Health. I wanna thank everybody who joined us today. We so appreciate your attendance and participation in the program. I know that I am honored to work with all of my clients at Cecilia Health, and I know all of the other dietitians that are working with you feel the same way. So we wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you for participating and we'll see you soon. Thank you everybody.